Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to our parish community of St. Mark the Evangelist as we celebrate Holy Mass on this, the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. In respect of today's liturgy, please take a moment to silence your cell phones. The celebrants for today's Mass are Father Raphael, Monsignor Jim, assisted by Deacon Joe. This Mass is being offered for the soul of Hank Goebel. In cooperation with America Needs Fatima, join us as we pray the Rosary for America on Saturday, October 16th at 12 noon at the Lady of Lords Prayer Garden here at St. Mark. Chairs will be provided, but you are welcome to bring your own as well. The service lasts about an hour, and your presence is so important. Please take home a copy of the bulletin to keep up to date with the special events here at St. Mark. You will also find detailed information on the events seen on our overhead screens in your copy of the bulletin. The readings for today's liturgy can be found in our Journey Songs Missal at 1010. So let us all rise and worship the Lord in song, number 575. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. We welcome all those who are worshiping with us online. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like clouds before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. 
all thy works with joy surround thee. Earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around this center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, rail and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou art Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Good morning, everyone. We welcome you today to the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And we begin our service as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, the readings this week pose a challenge to each of us to remain faithful to the ways of God, to seek God's wisdom, to hear and embrace the Word of God, and to make God a priority in our life, resisting the distractions of wealth and possession. And so as we begin this holy service today, let us ask Almighty God to forgive our sins. Lord Jesus, in you we find wisdom and fullness of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you sustain and strengthen us to do your will Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you look upon us with love and tenderness. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, Lord God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. That is it. Oh, okay. Let us pray. May your grace, O oh Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after us and make us always determined to carry out good works. We pray these things through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Let us now be seated and be attentive to the word of God.
A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand, and before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Everyone. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will sing for joy. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, O Lord, how long have pity on your servant, Lord. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we will see Fill us at dawn with your kindness, Lord, that all our day we may shout for joy. Make us glad for the days you made us suffer. Still make us glad for those evil days. Fill us with your love, O oh Lord, and we will see. Let your works be seen by your servants and your glory by their children too. And may the gracious care of the Lord, the Lord our God, be ours. Prosper the work of our hands. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed, the word of God is living and effective, sharper than a two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we 
must render an account. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up and knelt down before him and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go sell what you have and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at this. So Jesus again said to them in reply, children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, for human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter began to say to him, we have given up everything and followed you. And Jesus said, amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house, or brothers, or sisters, or mother, or father, or children, or lands, for my sake, and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters, and mothers and children and lands, with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Monsignor uh, Jim uh, said at the beginning that <clears throat> those words today, the liturgy of the word is very challenging. And it is one of the functions of the words of God. Uh, we have the moments when uh, yeah, we feel that we are challenged, what we hear. The God's word is bringing uh, many times a consolation, especially all those who are coming for the funeral masses. And uh, if we are listening attentively to the words, we can hear how much love, compassion the Lord has to those who are uh, losing, you know, uh, someone whom they love. The God's word is bringing hope, but from time to time also he, uh, this word is correcting us and it is something maybe we don't like. I don't know what about you, but sometimes when I read the Bible and there is something that is like the punch, I said, maybe the next passage. Uh, yeah, sorry, Lord, it happens. Maybe not to you. Uh, but today we have a uh, yeah, really challenging uh, word to all of us. We hear uh, about Jesus that was setting out on a journey, then the man is coming up with a question, and we do not know when or where exactly that is happening. 
Also another thing, we do not have the name of that person who comes to Jesus, uh, how uh, old is, it is said that, you know, was young, but we do not know the name person, the place, the time. Uh, and we have something concrete, the question. And the question which we have in this gospel is uh, actually a very universal question. Um, the question that we all might have. What must I do to inherit eternal life? What I must do, what must I do to inherit the eternal life? And Jesus uh, is not giving some kind of uh, theological class or explaining. He's very direct with the, the answer for that question. And it's no doubt here. Everyone remembers what Jesus said? Uh, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Ten commandments, right? Keep the commandments. That's it. That's it. We might say, yeah? And, uh, and what is happening uh, after um, this man uh, saying, yeah, of course I was doing that from my youth. Try to imagine. Remember the Ten Commandments. I will be not asking, but everyone remembers. And, you know, for me, it is interesting, as a young person, he was perfect with uh, the fourth co of the commandment, which is obey your parents. Wow, <laughs> interesting. Uh, I don't know how many young people we have here, but I remember when I was young, yeah? So I'm sure this commandment was not my priority. <laughs> uh, I hope that my parents are not watching uh, the, the streaming. Uh, but, you know, this man was so perfect, but still there's something more he had in his heart. He, he is desperate for more. And what is happening? The gospel tells us that Jesus looked at him, loved him. That is really amazing that it was not looking at him, but this uh, looking at this man was full of compassion, love. Uh, and he says, Jesus says, you are lacking in one thing, just one thing. One thing that is stopping you from really experiencing, you know, the happiness, the freedom. So what you have, give to the poor and come follow me. And uh, Jesus was saying that because he knew that it is what make the heart of this man uh, empty. The, uh, the struggle, uh, the uh, attachments to the things that he had. No, this man, he was thinking that he was climbing on the ladder of the success, spiritual success. But he didn't realize that this ladder leaned against the wrong building. So the man looked at Jesus. There was a silence and a lot of sadness in this man's heart. He thought that everything is okay. He's not committing any sin. But Jesus spotted that something was not right in this man's heart. There was this thing that was lacking freedom. He was possessed by his possessions. Uh, I don't know if, uh, have you ever uh, watched any uh, horror movie like Exor Exorcist? I'm not saying to watch, but you know those movies or the history about exorcism, we hear that someone was possessed by a demon. But you know, it's not about like being possessed by, by the demon or the de devil, but sometimes we might be possessed with the things. This man was possessed by the possessions, he was so tied, attached to those things that it was holding him back, like far from, from really experiencing, you know, totally God in his life. And then there was sadness. He went away sad for he had many possessions. Just one thing, try to imagine, just one thing, one more step, and his life will be uh, really uh, amazing. And you know, when we hear about this gospel today, which I said is very challenging to all of us, we might think in the same way, we are here. Jesus is looking at us, like at this person with love. And he's looking at us today, also maybe seeing something that is stand in our way of really experiencing the total freedom of the children of God. And maybe that is not money, right? Maybe it's not. Maybe that is uh, lust or arrogance or envy on, or unforgiveness, which is holding me so far from uh, forgive the relatives, friends, something that uh, really 
uh, it's not allowing me to uh, have a, a breath, a full chest, like spiritual breath, that I say, yes, I'm okay with everyone. And those little things, they can really hold us from, from the Lord, from the Lord. Our second reading today from the letter to the Hebrews says that the word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating even between soul and spirit, joint and marrow, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. So that passage from the second reading is telling us, yes, we have a help. God's word can help us with a spiritual diagnosis if we might be not aware if there's something. So the word of God can help us to see, to understand, maybe to discover some kind of spot in our hearts. And this God's word is able to bring to us the grace to make the spiritual surgery. Uh, you know, the word of God is like the scalpel that can remove, you know, this part uh, of our spiritual body to, uh, to have, us, have us healed, have us healed. The God's of word is uh, to identi identify that thing that can hold us back. You know, Jesus did it for the rich man. He diagnosed what the real problem was. He showed that to him. Even this man was living a very good life. And there was one thing, he was not willing to make the sacrifice. Not, he was not able to live those things that he felt secured with. And, you know, uh, that's just personal uh, sharing. Uh, you know, everyone has some kind of those things. And my, for example, is that I like to uh, have the control. I like having no problem and have everything under the control. I don't know if you have that in your life. Yeah, and many times when I think, okay, Lord, now I feel uh, secure, everything goes well in the parish and here and there, something is collapsing. And when I say, Lord, why? Yeah, and, you know, uh, many times the Lord showed me that it is because uh, I am trusting more to whom? To myself. Yeah, so that's why the castle from those cards when I am building is just collapsing because... Uh, I'm forgetting about uh, who is truly important. And that is it's what uh, I discover through God's word. Yeah? And of course, it is a, a lot of effort and accept, acceptance that the Lord can heal it. But eventually, that is something what can really be uh, totally taken by the Lord, but only in the way when we are allowed to do it. Anything. Uh, that's like my my thing, but each one of us has something that really can hold us back from the Lord. You now, the first reading said about the wisdom, and it is connected with another man who, as a young person, very rich, came to God, uh, King Solomon. Everyone remembers? Yeah, King Solomon, a very wise man. His father, King David, has built him a very nice kingdom. Uh, and what was in the heart of this young man, Solomon, when he came to the Lord, God said, you know, uh, ask whatever you want. You remember what he was asking for? For a big bag account? No, of wisdom. He said, I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be famous. I even I don't want to be powerful. I want to be wise. And wisdom, in the biblical meaning, it is not having a knowledge of the world like being un able to understand the theory of Einstein or whatever, it's, it's not the wisdom. I remember when I was um, a young priest in Poland in the first year, and uh, at the Częstochowa shrine, uh, we had many pilgrimages of uh, different groups of the people. And uh, what was very interesting that um, we had like the harvest feast, and those people who are coming for this pilgrimage, those who are working at the farms, many times they were not well educated. Yeah, they didn't uh, um, graduate uh, Harvard or whatever. Many times they had only high schools or even elementary schools. But what was really interesting, the wisdom that they had. I was overwhelmed many times how wise they were, even you know, not having like some big diplomas on the walls. Yeah? Because the wisdom is able to give us the right direction. And I'm not saying that the education is wrong, absolutely not, but sometimes that can lead us also to the right, to the wrong path 
it will again make it as our security for getting about the Lord. So King Solomon, this rich uh, young man came and he asked for a wisdom and the Lord said something very amazing in the first uh, book of Kings uh, that God will give him even more, not only wisdom, but wealth and honor, etc., etc. Only because he was, the King Solomon wanted to follow the Lord. Look first for the kingdom of God and everything will be given to you. Yeah, given to you. My brothers and sisters, Jesus showed this young man in the gospel uh, that he has a problem with unhealthy relationship with money. And if there is anything that you and me, we are lacking, you know, some kind of unhealthy relationship, it's, it is a time to ask the Lord, like this young man, to, to show us that, but also to accept, you know, his diagnosis and, uh, you know, the solution. Because only in that way we can fully live with the life of God in our hearts, totally being totally free, you know, with a hope, with a joy that we were even singing in our psalm. Fill us with your love, O Lord, and we'll sing for joy. So my brothers and sisters, that is a very good moment, this Eucharist, to ask the Lord to point what we might have that is stopping us from totally offering ourselves to him. And even this word looks like a challenge for us, there is only one reason that the Lord is doing that, because he wants us the best. Amen. Let us now stand and continue our worship and recite together our profession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is at the one Lord high, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. And now, my brothers and sisters, we come to the prayers of the faithful, the universal prayers of the church offered to God, our Father in heaven. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may experience God looking upon us with love and respond generously to what God asks us to do today, we pray to you, O Lord. <clears throat> for the synod that Pope Francis has opened, that God will guide the whole church in listening to the Holy Spirit so that we may deepen our communion and be more faithful to the mission of evangelization and reconciliation, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, give our prayer. For world leaders, may the spirit of wisdom come upon them to guide them in the difficult decisions that they must make we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who search for Jesus, but whose souls are burdened with possessions, that Jesus' love may break the bonds of their attachments, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who protect others, our military, our police officers, and firefighters, that God may grant them his protection as they serve the community and country, we pray to you, O Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful who have died, may they enjoy their eternal treasure in heaven. We also remember those for whom this holy mass is being offered. 
we pray to you, O Lord. For the prayers in our prayer book and the prayers we hold within our hearts during this moment of silence. We also pray for the grace this week to be free of materialism and sinful attachments. We pray to you, O Lord. O God, our Father in heaven, hear these petitions we place before you today. Grant them if they be your will. We pray all these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as I guess I presented before the altar, let us sing number 685, Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you have loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Oh, 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> remember, remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed, the body of Christ. Bring me to everlasting. Take our bread, we ask you 
ask you take our heart, we love you take our lives, oh Father we are yours, we are yours. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
prayer is there. Let us pray. Uh, we entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everyone. And those taking communion to the sick, may come forward at this time to receive their hosts. And for your little Sunday chuckle, you know, you can't turn on the television for the news without hearing, should children wear masks in school by the teachers or the principal or by their parents? Should they wear a mask in music class? Should they wear a mask in the cafeteria? Should they wear a mask in gym class? We've been hearing this now for several months. Well, sister, Mary Ironside, the principal at St. Agatha's <laughs> School, at lunchtime had a huge basket of apples with a sign that read, take only one, God is watching. And at the end of the food line, she had a huge tray of chocolate chip cookies and with a sign that read, take as many as you want, God is watching the apples. <laughs> <laughs> Have a wonderful week, everyone. Hail God, you, the Redeemer, <laughs> spouse of the blessed. Did you Lord. like that? To you, God, trusted it only Son. In you, Mary placed her trust. With you, Christ became man. Blessed Joseph, too. Show yourself a father. Guide us in the path of life. Obtain for us. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountain high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia. Shout. With gladness dance for joy, O oh, come before the Lord, and play for God a glad tambourine, and let your trumpets sound. Sing a new song unto the Lord, let your song be sung from mountains high. Sing a new song unto the Lord, singing Alleluia.